Greetings, everybody. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me today. My name is uh, Christian Barker, and this is the latest installment of Banter with Barker, my ongoing series of interviews uh, during the, uh, the quarantine period, uh, broadcasting live from my living room. And today I have the, uh, the great treat of chatting with a gentleman uh, by the name of Ethan Coe. Um, now, Ethan, I've known for, uh, for quite some years now, uh, probably around about a decade, around about the same amount of time that's, uh, that his business has been going. Um, Ethan Kay is the uh, brand name that, uh, that, the, uh, that Ethan Coe goes by. And uh, yeah, Ethan creates some of the, uh, the most beautiful and finest uh, exotic skin accessories, handbags, purses, and so forth to man and or woman and Ethan is joining us right now hello Ethan hi Christian how are you I'm very well it's lovely to be speaking with you we haven't seen one another in uh, in quite some time so we'll have to catch up in person soon now that we're able to absolutely absolutely it's so great to hear from you I think we haven't seen each other for a couple of years now yeah, it's a, it's a good five years or so, I think. So, yeah, but when I learned that you were um, coming back to Singapore and, uh, and opening up a, a new atelier and, and boutique here, I thought, wow, that's fantastic. So let's have a chat. Um, yes, I'd love to invite you to visit in person as well. <laughs> we're, uh, we're free and allowed to do that and liberated from the shackles of our, uh, of our home. I'd love to pop on down um, <laughs> very, very soon. But, you know, um, for, for those who don't know of, uh, of Ethan, Ethan's business, as I said, Ethan K has been going for, what, is it 10 or 11 years now? Uh, I think it's been going for 10 years, uh, almost 10 years now. So the end of this year uh, will be the 10 year anniversary uh, leading up to 2021. Yeah, okay. so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I hope to have a, uh, a proper little soiree for that. You're famous for your, uh, your nice <laughs> parties so uh, so that that would be great but uh, but yeah so Ethan so uh, a decade ago um, uh, however your roots in exotic skin um, in in the family um, go back over a century now um, so could you tell um, the people who are watching um, you know what the origins of your you know family heritage with uh, with exotic uh, skins are and how that story sort of goes back yeah, so, um, well, uh, uh, to your point, I, I think that, um, you know, as a, as a young kid, I was, I was always very uh, involved in the family business. And, you know, uh, when I tell people that I'm originally from Singapore um, and our family has four generations of crocodile skins, heritage and tanning expertise, mm -hmm. a lot of, um, 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 many people can't believe it because they do know of Singapore as an entry port of trade and a financial hub. But no one actually knew that we actually had something creative and artisanal. So as I, as I traveled around the world, I realized that, you know, a lot of our roots uh, have not been rediscovered. And, mm. um, and I started looking at the old pictures of where I grew up. And at that time, you know, when, when Singapore was a much slower paced uh, city, uh, you know, we had a, got a beautiful garden in our family home. And, you know, there was all the tropical trees, that the coconut trees, the mango trees. And, and then at the back, that was where the tannery was that my father and my great-grandfather uh, found. Um, but I guess um, uh, coming from a tanning family, it, uh, you know, creativity and colours really sparked my interest at a very young age. Um, uh, I, I had a father that was highly entrepreneurial and, and he always, you know, as I was growing up, he would take me to the fairs in Italy, to um, to um, to Paris, you know, to 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 work with the teams with Chanel and Vuitton, and and also I did internships with Hermes. So I guess you know, with this uh, tanning uh, interest and and family story, it really took me uh, uh, to to see the other end of the. The, the, the spectrum where it was not just about colouring the beautiful crocodile skins, but it was how they were turned into uh, these beautiful bags. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, yeah. tell a little about... You, and look, I, I, no, I, I wanted to um, raise the point that it's absolutely true what you say. You know, even when I first moved to Singapore and uh, 16 years ago now and learned that this country... Um, does have this this incredibly rich heritage of uh, of tanning the finest um, exotic skins in the world. Uh, whilst the crocodiles might come from 
my home country of Australia or elsewhere. Um, that that you know this this final work, which is which is so important in the process, um, this and canneries such as are uh, you know known for for turning out some of the very finest skins, which are then used by um, you know the leading the leading brands of the world. I don't think we need to mention any names, but uh, but yeah. So can you tell? me something about you know I, I know you've got a unique agate uh, finish um, process and there's also the fact that you're very particular I think about using the very best parts of the of the crocodile and and choosing the very very best uh, skins which obviously you have an advantage of uh, getting first choice of, uh, of what's coming through the family tannery so yeah um, what is it that sets your skins apart? So uh, one of the reasons why I started Ethan K was because I felt that luxury had become too mass market. So, you know, as I was growing up and, and I guess, you know, we, we could see, you know, in, in the eight, from the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s, at the boom of the luxury market, because at the beginning, it was only to serve the aristocrats, the select few. And as, as, the, as the middle class in different uh, uh, economies like Asia and Europe started growing and, and the U.S., and, and, and people really uh, valued it as a kind of status symbol. So when I was growing up, you know, it was always like a crocodile bag, an exotic skin leather bag was really something that uh, meant uh, 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 something to a woman. And of course, you know, as she would go from the day to the evenings, you know, the first thing that you can see most of the time, as much as the shoe designers love to say that it's always the shoe because the shoe is the first home and the handbag is the second home. But I think it's the other way around because the first thing that you see, especially in Asia, uh, uh, the handbag is always very important. Of course, you know, in, in terms of, um, you know, the, these crocodiles are also part of a sustainable farming program. So um, the crocodiles come from Louisiana, uh, the alligators come from Louisiana, and the mm. crocodiles come from uh, uh, South Africa and Australia as well. Um, there are a couple of differences, which I will share with you a little bit later on how to dis distinguish the difference between a uh, Nile crocodile to an Australian saltwater crocodile. But what I guess uh, makes um, uh, it really exciting is that crocodile skins are just like diamonds. So um, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, 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 tanning the skins and even cutting it on the leather, um, uh, it, it all that there is something like a law called the cut, the clarity, and so and so forth. And and so when I started uh, uh, Ethan K, you know, everyone thought that oh, you know, um, uh, uh, it's great that you can study design. And and frankly speaking, I was quite naive at the beginning, ten years ago. I thought, oh my god, you know, like it it looks so easy to create a a, a luxury brand from the outside. But as I, I I think that if I wasn't that naive, I guess. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be doing this today. But uh -huh. having said that, you know, of course, there's everyone who's always saying that, oh, Ethan, you know, but most of the luxury brands today that you see come from Europe. And, and you know, but, but then, of course, I had the heritage uh, uh, that really gave me the credentials. But at the end of the day, I think that, you know, as, as designers, one of the whole uh, purpose uh, behind uh, creativity is to drive forward. And, cre and creativity and good design as well can... I strongly believe that creativity and good design can improve lives, can, uh, can solve problems. And, and that was actually the starting point of my business. Not really so much so the skin. Because as a kid, when I continued growing up in the family business, I always wanted to join my father and learn, you know, you know the, the art of like, you know, shining the skin with the agate stone, as you mentioned. And, and you know, of course, some of these are like old art artisans and, and you know, they, they actually rub the skin on an agate stone for more than eight hours per skin. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not in the tannery right now. So in the future, I will, I would love to show uh, you and your your um your audience uh, exactly how uh, they do it i think it can be a great educational tour but for me you know um uh, the design was the the design element was very important more than just like creating a brand that just like uh, is a status symbol i would say yeah yeah no, no, creating a new luxury brand is a very difficult undertaking yeah. so so thank goodness that you were naive enough to uh, <laughs> uh to set off on that task uh, so Look, yeah, please, please tell me how the how the brand um, originated. Uh, you know, you'd come out of uh, out of uh, you know completed your studies, graduated from your studies, uh, and then decided uh, with the great naivety and and overconfidence of youth to uh, to go out there and, and, and set up your own business. Um, and how 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 did things progress? And and you know what were, you, were the first things that led to your success? And I know it's quite an unbelievable story because. 
you know when when uh, when 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 I meet my friends whom I who whom I I was I I saw very regularly ten years ago and they see me now. Of course, you know I grew a little bit in size, but um, but on the other hand, um, I think it has been, <laughs> it has been and it has been an, a whirlwind because. Um, um, you know, when I first uh, moved to London, I actually went to study in St. Martin's and London College of Fashion. Um, and frankly speaking, I actually, as I mentioned, because out of desperate uh, uh, need for good design, I realized that most of the crocodile bags that were in the market were very traditional and they were always in black, in dark brown. And, and I felt that, you know, I could express my tropical uh, mindset uh, and personality to the world. And so... Oh. Uh, I, w I, w I went to the, I, I, you know, as we know, all the luxury shoppers love to shop in Harrods. You know, I guess from the days of Mohammed Al Fayed, and you could see, you know, Michael Jackson went to, you know, cut the ribbon and start the sale, and, and there was a pet shop and so and so forth. But during those days when I first went there, and I, I felt that, you know, everything was so fabulous. But when it came, always came down to the, the, the exotic skin bags, it was always very traditional. And, and I felt that luxury at that time was going through a little change. Of course, as we know today, every three years, there is a huge change, a shift. And of course, you know, pre-corona and post-corona, uh, which I will address to you later on, on the, mm. the, the vision going forward, it is also a very interesting time for luxury and fashion. So yeah. I felt that a lot of the luxury bags were very uh, hard and, and, and very, uh, very heavy. So I designed myself a beautiful gray alligator overall. And um, uh, I just started wearing it. And, and one day, you know, there was, uh, uh, there was the um, uh, New York Times conference in, or, or it was a financial times conference in Marrakesh. And, and I, I signed up and I just went. And, and on the way in the plane, I ran into a, a, a woman who saw uh, my bag and she, she instantly recognized it and she said it was beautiful and I started sketching a bag for her in the plane and, and then she, she told me that, oh, if you design it, I'll buy it. And, and then she turned out to be the fashion director at Harrods. So right. uh, that oh. was what really, uh, uh, that was what really, uh, one, of the few, one of the few stories that got my career started. So I guess it's been quite uh, serendipitous, of course, um, but uh, at the same time, I had a very supportive family because, uh, uh, frankly, when I first told my father that I wanted to to study design and, uh, and, and coming from a very traditional uh, and conservative Asian family, it was always important that, you know, the next generation went to a business school, went to Oxford, went to Harvard. And, and so I thought that was quite a shock to them. But I guess, you know, uh, uh, fast forward today, I've never regretted any decision in my life because I think that we should continue to push uh, uh, boundaries and promote culture through good design. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, you had that, that very fortuitous uh, meeting uh, with the lady from, from Harrods and, yeah. uh, and eventually found yourself being, being stocked on the, uh, on the main uh, ground floor of, of Harrods, I believe, um, yeah. and, and then set up your, uh, your atelier uh, there in, in Kensington, um, all in fairly swift order. Uh, yes, I guess, you know, as, as I mentioned, the first five years were really um, uh, crucial moments to me. But I would say that uh, I had a very good support system from Singapore and London. So where, where most uh, designers uh, only operate out of one place, uh, for me, uh, at the same time in Singapore, I, I, I you know, I, I did not even begin with having like a five-year business plan and a showroom and so on and so forth. So in fact, today that we have a gallery on on uh, in River Valley and, and an atelier in Sloan Street in London. So I, I, I feel that this is a, a very fortunate thing for us. But um, at that time when I, I was carrying my bag and I had tons of orders, so I would visit, you know, some clients' homes and they would start taking out all their exotics that they bought over the last few years. And so I realized that there is a, a, a sizable uh, market for great collectors. So I, I'm sure that you, today, if you look at Christie's and you look at Sotheby's, you know, a lot of the great auction houses, you know, actually handbags has become a category in itself as a collectible art. But fast forward 10 years ago, I don't think that there was kind of like a formula. And, uh, and so the business really grew organically. And of course, before that, and, and after that, I found myself, you know, uh, uh, designing a bag for Princess Eugenie when I met her in Five Harford Street in Lulu's in London. And, and it all started with a, with a, with a bag that 
uh, that was a laptop pouch and I folded it into half and Princess Eugenie loved it. And then after that, she discovered my Minodier, that Princess Beatrice wore it to the royal escort, which, which evolved into my, my, one of my top um, styles today in Harris called the Duchess Bag. So, yeah, so I guess um, uh, there's many uh, exciting stories, uh, but I guess um, in terms of good design uh, it, and, and when you cater to a very specific crowd, you, it's about uh, how relevant it is to their lifestyles. Of course, today when there's no royal escort, then luxury is also morphing into something more functional because everyone needs to put a hand sanitizer in their bag so they can no longer carry those micro-sized bags that could never fit anything as a fashion statement. So um, I think it's quite an exciting time for fashion now because I guess rules are being rewritten. I'm sure you can feel it as well. And yep. uh, um, uh, everyone is quite excited about the way forward because that's what fashion and good design is for. Yeah. Oh, certainly. Um, you, you know, it's, it's interesting you, you talk about those, um, uh, those, those personal meetings with people. And, and I think, um, you know, it's, it's very clear that a lot of your business has been about you personally going out there and, mm -hmm. and your customers and socializing or, or befriending um, your customers. Was that, was that kind of a conscious um, decision or is that just, you know, you the, and the circles that you move in and meeting interesting people? And uh, because that, 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 that's not always the way. A designer will often be, be hidden off back in their, in their workshop or their design studio and uh, not perhaps interact their customers as much as you. You're, you're very much taking it into their homes and, uh, as, as you say, um, having champagne and, and with joint designs. Yeah, well, I guess um, it's a conscious and unconscious um, uh, 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 way, you know, and, and for me, uh, we don't have a theory and we don't have a formula, but it's just an approach. And um, I think that the business has functioned vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, for the last couple of years. Of course, I guess with every uh, uh, design brand or luxury uh, uh, company, it always starts out from the founder and, and from the unique stories uh, it comes. Because I think that good design and, and luxury, sometimes it's, it's more uh, about encounters uh, and and sometimes, you know, like good design and a good design need can be out of desperation as well. Mm. Um, I, 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 for me, I was at the beginning, I was never the designer that sat behind my desk because um, I really wanted my good designs to be worn. But of course, uh, as the brand continued to progress, like for example, you know, this is one of my new pieces from my mm -hmm. Essentials collection. So you can see, yeah. Lovely. I will share with you pictures later. So it's actually really small. It's only 22 centimeters. It's, and it's, it was inspired by a big briefcase, you know. So this was, you know, this was the original one. It was much bigger. Yep. Yeah. So this is good part of the, the, the new uh, Essentials collection as well. Um, having said that, uh, our collection now is mainly divided into three segments. Uh, we have one which is the masterpieces, we have one which is the icons, and one which is the essentials. So the essentials is a new um, uh, area that we have just added into our uh, portfolio. And um, well, as over the last five years, I had to say that as the economy continued to boom and markets were very uh, vibrant. So, um, you know, over the last two years, we had, we had an amazing opportunity, which I would say that could never have been done today. So we, we, were, uh, we actually did a collaboration with the Ritz in Paris. So today you can find our bags there. Uh, we did, a, we did a, an evening uh, 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 reception as well with Christie's to uh, launch, um, you know, our 88,000 uh, pound bag with uh, Maison Malerio, the oldest um, uh, jeweler in Europe uh, with the, the special diamond clasp on the bag. And also uh, 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 last year, we also collaborated with uh, uh, Joan Pablo Molina, uh, which is uh, one of the key architects in, in France. Um, he actually designed chateaus, but uh, you know, we met in an encounter and he designed my space in Gallery Lafayette in Paris as well. So, you know, this was some of our stunning um, uh, developments. So you can see that this is actually the, the space there. You can see it. You feel like you're shopping in a theater. So uh, yeah, yeah. this was what we had. Yeah, and also we did a collaboration with uh, Maison Asoline. So uh, we also had this uh, major trunk as well. So, um, you know, I would say that over the last five years, uh, although I was still very vis visible in the business, but I, I guess um, for me as a designer, 
and, and as a creative person, I I very much prefer to uh, be alone in the studio because for me that's therapy and th and that's where I can put my ideas into action. So I guess for a designer in terms of bags, uh, uh, there is a constant struggle because you uh, you functionality also need to meet. Uh, style and and over the last five years, I would say that I wish I had more time uh, alone. But I guess uh, uh, with the speed that the world was moving, um, uh, I couldn't afford the luxury. So when Corona came, uh, it actually gave me the time to redesign my whole collection, which morphed into the essentials, which is what you will see going forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there are some silver linings to this. Uh, um, <laughs> You know, terribly disastrous and, and tragic period that we're going through. But I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to learn, you know, I think one of the big points of difference for Ethan K is that, um, you know, a great deal of what you do is, uh, is bespoke couture, whatever you want to call it, unique creations where you discuss with your client what your lifestyle is, needs are, and then create something in reaction to that. And often, those items, I believe, you know, turn into uh, or evolve into into regular pieces of your collection. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. So, um, you know, we uh, under the um, uh, under our icons collection. So uh, you see the Duchess bag. So the Duchess of York was uh, going to the royal escort, and she really wanted a bag, uh, not that not that she could hold uh, because she needed to curtsy to the queen, and um, and find, you know. So when I when I first designed this bag, um, you know. Uh, it's called the Duchess. I'll show you in a second anyway. And so I designed it because I thought that it actually looked like uh, a panettone. And it was, it was so cute, you know. And, and, but when I started showing it to all my clients in, in Asia, they, none, it was, nobody wanted it at the beginning because they, they were saying that it looks like a, a dumpling, right? And, and so uh, I took it to London and the Duchess of York was desperately looking for a bag because she needed it to be underneath her arm. So when she could see to the Queen uh, and Royal Escort and and instantly it became a, a a big hit and before then after that Harris started requesting for it and and so and so forth so you know i guess uh, uh it can be both so you can see this is how the duchess bag is worn so today today is being adapted into a street style so you can carry we offer it in full leather and you can wear it with denim as well uh, not just for royal escort goers as well so but but i guess um uh, uh, there are many unique stories on how the design uh, evolves so i had another uh, bag uh, that i designed called the ala bag so i was actually in moscow and and on the way to a fashion show and i ran into ala verber who was the vice president at zoom departmental store at the time and um she 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 started taking out her things uh, uh, and and everything started falling out so i i said why don't i design a, a a trap door for you and, and and so that you can reach uh, your back uh, from uh, behind and and then uh, that that also became another one of our, our, our iconic pieces but having said that uh, one of the reasons why I started uh, the new essentials collection was because I felt that lifestyles were changing um, uh, over the last five years uh, we had a lot of demand from uh, bags which now evolved into becoming our masterpieces collection uh, because uh, we had a special bag called the Doha bag that has a, a bears a unique um, a handle that was inspired by a necklace of uh, 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 a, a princess whom I met in front of the Ritz Hotel in Place Vendome. So that's part of the masterpiece collection. But uh, in our essentials, um, they're very daily. And uh, over the years, especially when we travel around uh, in... As, 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 so I agree with you that, you know, as a designer, sometimes you can't stay in your studio because you really need to meet the customers that are actually wearing it. So in, in um, our American customer is very different because for them, it's really about... Uh, functionality. Uh, it's about daily. So it's not just about the net worth or or um, or like status symbol. But Americans in general are more functional. Uh, maybe if you go to Texas, then it's slightly different. But you go from Boston to uh, Boston to um, uh, Greenwich and so and so forth. Functionality is key to them. So we will create special totes in different colors. And and of of course, as you know, Sing Singapore is is a place that has only like one season or three seasons, hot, hotter and hottest. But yes. over the way, there's different seasons. So you have like you know all these uh, beautiful combinations that we just created in in like British racing green and like ca canvas there. So um, yeah, we we really have different styles that cater to different. I'm sure uh, uh, Chris. 
Christian when we met uh, many years ago, I think in Shanghai. At that time, you know, it was mostly, you know, the, the very dainty uh, ladylike bags that I was selling to a select group of ladies at that time. And sure. uh, I guess it has evolved uh, ever since. Yeah. No, but I'm, uh, I, I think it's, 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 um, it's interesting. I, I would like to discuss, uh, you know, I know you have some male customers as well as the ladies, and we've only really spoken about the, the ladies uh, thus far. Um, mm. what, what sort of demands are you, are you hearing from your, uh, your gentlemen customers uh, these days? What are they looking for? I mean, I've heard that more kind of mid-size leather goods are becoming more popular rather than the sort of full-size laptop bag that guys mm -hmm. are getting smaller things that can maybe just carry a, um, an, an iPad, their telephone, etc. cetera. Um. Yeah. Um, so I guess the, the male customer as well has evolved over the years. So from my first uh, 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 press article that came out was from Nick Folks at GQ. And uh, at that time when I met him, you know, he said, okay, you know, I, I need a stylish gray uh, or brown alligator hold all for, for, for the weekend in, uh, in the Central Pay, you know, uh, and, and so and so forth. So, um, you know, it was always that weekend uh, bag that uh, we created. I think I will show you in a second as well. Yeah, uh, it, but but our, the male customer has 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 evolved uh, a lot in the last few years. So at the beginning, it was very traditional briefcases. So uh, one of my friend, uh, Sir Harold Tillman, who was the chairman of British Fashion Council, um, yeah. he was one of my first champions, and and uh, uh, he was he, I designed f uh, for him a very traditional green uh, 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 briefcase as well. But I guess uh, as fashion changed, uh, uh, you know, these bags became very important in the last. Few years so you know you can you can fit like a, a laptop uh, and a few belongings this is like quite a stylish and chic um, mm. uh, uh, it's good for the the the, the rate customer the the uh, you know the the uh, the, the even the Japanese as well. I guess you know bags are very important to them. So you know we did have a few Japanese customers over the years, and and and, and in Japan tote bags are very important. So we created this ultra lightweight um, uh, crocodile bag that that is for for totes, and you can see it's so you can even like you know do this to it. Yeah. So this is like a special hand staking technique that was formulated by my father, uh, Mr. Ko, in the tannery. And it involves, you know, hand staking the crocodile piece over a metal pole, a wooden pole for more than eight hours. And uh, it becomes so soft. So these are all like uh, techniques that were accumulated um, uh, over the years. Uh, but having said that, you know, as we know, streetwear has, has become so immensely popular over the years. So everything has becoming much more casual the first the, the the last year or two. So we are releasing our uh, renewed men's range later this year. And, you know, it, it, I know it might be very surprising to you, but, you know, these are the kind of mini bags that are very, and it's actually for the men's collection. So, you know, the men actually wear them like that, you know, oh. like this. Yeah, so this this is 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 what's trending, and some of them wear it with a t-shirt and a denim jacket, and so and so forth. But what is even more surprising that it's like this is only eighteen centimeter, and this is also a uh, uh, part of the men's collection, and and you can fit like uh, some, you can at least fit like your phone and hand sanitizer inside as well. So. You know, I guess uh, this is how fashion has evolved. Um, uh, it continues to change and, you know, uh, I, I guess uh, streetwear, uh, uh, it's in now, but we never know what happens the next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you, you were mentioning before that obviously um, we've all been stuck in our homes for a, for a few months and uh, perhaps going to be going out slightly less or, you know, traveling a little bit less, perhaps going on longer, longer journeys, but less frequently in the year, you know, uh, it all remains to be seen what's in the crystal ball. Um, yeah. But yeah, what, what, what do you foresee um, are going to be the effects that, uh, that this current situation um, has on, um, uh, or on, you know, the particular types of, uh, of products that, uh, that people are gonna um, going forward over the next couple of years? Well, it's a very interesting question, uh, Christian, that you asked because uh, I guess this is on everyone's minds now. And mm -hmm. uh, what is, uh, uh, personally, personally, I feel that it's like a rewriting of rules, but it's also a time for uh, relationships, for friendships, for, um, 
you know, for uh, you know, for us to be more content in one place to be able to live in the moment. So, you know, the the last five years when everyone was extremely excited and you know, during summer, you know, we, there were countless of parties in Saint Tropez, in Mykonos, in 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 so and so forth. But I guess with the restriction of travel, uh, we do have some friends that are very adventurous. They are, the, the the travel schedule continues to to go. And uh, you know, two years ago, it was always about that statement piece. You know, uh, in the the white party in Saint Tropez, you know, the disco party, and so and so forth. And and for the men, they were usually um, uh, 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 ordering uh, bags that were more about the status symbol. You know, a shiny crop. And and you won't be surprised because you know men in the last few years it's it's okay for a man to carry a red alligator hold all um these days yeah. right? but i guess um I, I feel that um there are two spectrums you know there are the customers that are the collectors you know that that love to order a bag that looks like a, a coca-cola can you know to carry you know it's a conversation piece but i think that people during times of uncertainty people go back to real value people go back to um to a relationship they go back to you know real good quality artisanal and that's what uh, uh, we stand for in the long run because you know for for me it was so easy to create a bag that looks like a camera or to create a bag that looks like a lollipop but I just feel that this will detract um uh away from the real beauty of the skins. Having said that, you know because of the you know the inconvenience of global travel, uh, I've also also designed a new uh, little uh, travel bag that is called the staycation. So uh, huh? wait, let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you see, you see, Christian, you have all the first tips of my new collection. Amazing. Get the yeah. Oops. Very no, good. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping it from the, from the box, as we see. Uh -huh. so this, is, this is the staycation. A bit of uh, 1930s. Yeah, very 1930s, you know, 1900s, uh, um, maybe Hollywood style. <laughs> Or or maybe I would say like British British style racing green with my with my hedgehogs that represent adventure. So yep. um as you know, my styles were always very classic from before, but I guess um you know, I think I think you know luxury is also becoming more inclusive and and uh more than just having, you know, like a a, a shiny crop green uh, weekend, but people are more uh, also about more about style today. So people buy good design. Um uh they, they want they want they want to look stylish, not just like it's not just about the brands. Of course I I do know that, you know, having come back to Asia uh, more often the last two years, you know, I, I I mean, you know, the auctions of, of Pateks and Birkins and so forth have, have been flying through the roof. But uh, that having said, you know, once, you know, the collector has the the pieces that have, uh, you know, in the past it was to tell people, oh, you know, I'm, I'm wealthy, you know, I've made it. Uh, but today it's more like, you know, I have good taste, you know, this is, this is what represents me. And I guess, you know, for, for, I'm sure for you, you might have seen the, the shift because you are, you're here more as well. Um, but I guess this is where luxury is going. And also the millennials and Gen Z as well are asking more questions before than their, their counterparts. It's, it, you know, previously it was like, okay, you know, I, I, I look at a magazine these are the 10 key advertisers. I want to see what they have and I'm just buying it. But these days, you know, the millennials and Gen Zs tend to ask more questions. How is it made? You know, and, and why am I buying this? How special it is? It, will I be the, the, the few who have it? And how many do you produce? And all that. So these are, they, they ask a very different set of questions from my parents. And, and I think our, our designs for the essentials really is to cater to the next decade and, and, and beyond. Yeah. Yeah, rarity is because, and you know, you were talking about streetwear before, where um, so much of, of that business model is about rarity. You know, I, I often argue that if if a company chooses to only make fifty T-shirts, then that's not that's not the same sort of rarity as you, you know, having to find the absolute most exquisite skins and only being able to make X number of things or any any, any sort of craftsmanship or artisanal business where, you know, a several row tailor can't just say, right, we're going to ramp up our, uh, our production and make a hundred times as many. Whereas a, a sort of streetwear company, they can and just place an order and add an extra couple of zeros onto it and say, instead of a hundred, we'll make a hundred thousand. Um, <laughs> but, but that whole mindset of rarity, mm -hmm. that's great that it is, um, you know, uh, making that a more important attribute with a, with a younger uh, or with, you know, the next couple of generations of consumers that they're valuing 
rarity and not necessarily wanting something that you're going to see a thousand people walking down Oxford exactly. Street. Exactly. No, also, I think, I think because of, uh, uh, you know, during times of uncertainty and times of transition, people go back to real value, you know, and they, they do ask a new set of questions uh, uh, versus like, oh, what's hot this season? But because people talk about value, I, I think like, like not just in the fashion industry or, or the craftsmanship industry, but I think in most industries, everyone is now questioning like, what kind of value is this creating? And, and I think that, you know, for us, one of our ethos is that we collaborate with small scale artisans, you know, from, you know, the semi precious stones that we we carve in Tuscany in Italy uh, 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 you know to to you know the other clasps or the canvas linings or or we, we do work with small scale artisans to ensure that you know uh, uh, they continue to have work but at the same time I think that artisanship and and the power of the hands is still very relevant and it's going to be a very well-paid job because these are skills that you can't uh, you can't easily replicate. And, and I think in, in a way, I don't want to use the word sustainable because I think it's been overused. But mm. I feel that uh, um, uh, that's what we stand for. And, and what, what I hope is that, you know, we continue to cultivate a new generation of, of collectors because um, uh, I think that uh, uh, the spirit of collectorship is, is beautiful. I think that in these times that are uncertain, you know, people still go back to true beauty. I mean, true beauty is appreciated. You need it. You need good beauty. You need good design uh, as part of your lives because this uh, brings you forward and, and it makes your mood better. So yeah. I, uh, I think that's what creativity is for. Yeah. Certainly, certainly. Now, what, one of the, one of the uh, viewers who was commenting earlier was saying, you know, that your colours are, uh, are absolutely amazing. And uh, I know you're saying that you're doing some more subdu subdued stuff now, but, um, but, you know, what you're really renowned for is, as you say, those, those beautiful, very tropical, bright, uh, eye-catching oh. catching colours. And yeah. as you were saying at, at the start, you know, a, a lot of, when you started out, a lot of um, companies were very much focused on either brown, black, very sort of subdued. Um, do you think that's because, you know, a lot of consumers, if they are looking at, you know, the price of an exotic skin and you know, a large exotic skin, particularly handbag or bag is, um, is quite a large price. Um, the, the manufacturers were thinking, well, people are going to want to be relatively conservative. So we shouldn't, do anything that's that's too sort of out there because people are going to want to be conservative. I mean, you know, look to give you an example. Last week I was writing uh, a story for uh, for Tatler about um, about very brightly coloured watches, like the like the Rolex Daytona with the with the rainbow um, gem bezel, and uh, and was saying, you know, if you see someone wearing that watch, they probably have a bunch of other, you know. Um, beautiful, much more conservative watches in collection. That's not going to be the only watch you have, but it's a little bit like if you see someone driving an orange or lime green Lamborghini, that's probably not their only car. That's probably not the car yeah. that they drive to the office or pick up the kids from yeah. soccer. <laughs> in. So, so is, 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 is that, I guess my question is, is that what you thought, you know, someone's got to cater to, all right, you've already got your black bag, you've already got your brown bag, what next? You know, you need the, the lemon yellow, banana yellow, or uh, lime green, etc. No, I think, uh, well, uh, to your point, uh, I think you've covered both, you know, and, and there's two ends to the spectrum. So when we created the essentials range, you know, most of the essentials bags that we have are, are below the price of 4,000 US dollars. So, you know, they're very accessible, very daily, because it, it is... The, the, the range was born out of uh, a need, right? And of course, you know, just two days ago, I was with one of my collectors, Doreen, whom you can see her on my Instagram. You know, for her, you know, she has, you know, my bags in all these different bright colors uh, okay. uh, and, 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 and in different, from lime green to, to baby pink and so and so forth. So I guess, you know, the spectrum is getting wider because, you know, you, you have the customer that really wants uh, functionality because, you know, if you just talk about the, the female customer, you know, to, today, you know, of course, they order their groceries online, but sometimes some some clients love to go to, uh, you know, a nice supermarket and look yep. at their fruits and, and so and so forth. And, and they want to carry their things. And, and for some women, they just have so many things to carry in their bags, right? So so we have to cater to these two spectrum of uh, 
of uh, of customer. But at the same time, I think that the true luxury customer and collector uh, never goes out of style because you know they uh, uh, they collect in terms of their wardrobe. So so in terms of like color spectrums, you have like the Mino Deer. Uh, you know, I I thought that you know the the the, um, the box clutch that I designed for women was totally over because there are no balls. You know, but in fact the demand for it has been rising week uh, over a week on week the last few weeks because you know they they look at it as a collector's item and they want to have it in different spectrums and i also learned that some of them wear it in the day as well so i guess you know it's um <laughs> yeah so i guess it's very hard to uh, control or, or, or guess how people wear your bags. Uh, you know, in Harrods uh, this week, um, uh, we just sold a, a very mini uh, 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 alligator bag with a special, you know, um, uh, hand painted lining that's inspired by my new collection called um, uh, um, a Sanctuary Royale. And it's, you know, very inspired by, you know, the, the nature in, in Hyde Park and a, and a townhouse in, in, in London, just looking, uh, overlooking the River Thames. And that will be the center point of my new fragrance collection that I'm launching at Harrods soon as well. So uh, there are quite a lot of exciting things in the pipeline. Uh, 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 but, you know, one story leads to the next and the next leads to the next. So uh, I guess the sky is the limit. But, uh, you know, my vision at Ethan K is that I... Uh, uh, it's quite different from the last decade because in the last decade, I always wanted just the collectors to own it and, and a select group. But uh, I think now luxury is very much about inclusivity. And in the next decade, what I hope to see is that, um, you know, many different customers of different demographics appreciating Ethan K, appreciating our work as great design. Uh, and, and it transcends uh, different nationalities, different races, different uh, groups. And, and because we think that good design... Uh, 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 improves the world and makes the world a happier place. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, you know, you're, you're speaking about transcending race and nationality and things, um, but but do you notice, you know, is, is there a clear difference in tastes between a consumer in the Middle East, say, and the United Kingdom, or the consumer from, from here in Singapore to perhaps someone in Japan? Um, what, what, what would you say are kind of the main... Uh, yeah, differences in taste and, and yeah, and eyes. Um, well, uh, there's definitely a difference in taste. Uh, of course, I wouldn't say that it's defined by nationality or country and so and so forth. But, you know, just uh, last month, we uh, uh, we have uh, uh, one of our really good clients in London. Actually, they, they are from Uzbekistan. And, and for them, you know, when you see them in the day, they're in streetwear, they're in sneakers, they're so casual, and they love our crossbody bags in, in bright colors. And recently, she just ordered one in white ostrich that we're delivering. Um, okay you know for her summer and of course i met them in monaco and they are in monaco every summer um uh, and and they usually have a different set of clothes for the summer but at the same time of course you have uh, your uh, customer from New York who who is uh, she's a doctor and she travels you know she works with the world health organization and 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 she she travels between um uh, different continents and and for her a tote bag is extremely important but at the same time you know she uh has uh uh, our Duchess bag, you know, that she carries to, uh, you know, as she moonlights as a socialite and in the in the evening, and 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 you know, I met her in in uh, a gala ball in Musée d'Orsay in in Paris uh, during um, a benefit um, uh, a gala uh, some years ago. So I I think it you can say that uh, there is one kind of Ethan K customer. I would say that ten years ago I I could tell you that, but today it's morphed into a very different ball game because at the same time in London, you could have uh, an influencer or a blogger that buys our bag because she loves it and she she wants to uh, do a post, you know, not really to use it, but she, she thinks that this bag has to be Instagrammable. So uh, oh. it was not my idea, but it was hers. And and so she, she saw this bag called uh, Loop Me Right, and it, it has a special loop on the bag and that, that, that can fit a phone, and, and it just appealed to her. So it's quite incidental, but I guess this is what the, the, the lifestyle was the last uh, three years. But going forward, I think that, um, you know, compartments are very important. So in uh, some of our bags, like the staycation, you know, it has, it has a special zipper pouch. It actually comes with two zipper pouches because I think even for men, uh, they prefer, uh, you know, for them, they, they put, they need a wash bag and they need a pouch, apparently yeah. from what I see, because 
you know, I do travel. I think a lot of our our male customers, uh, uh, some of them are, are in London and, and they go for hunting trips in Shropshire and, and I, I went with them and, and some, of course, you know, they love colors like tan and green and, and you know, the year before during New Year's Eve, I was, I went for a, a, a hunting trip in, in, in Edinburgh, in the uh, uh, Van Vogel Castle where, where, you know, they, they hosted us and, and I looked at, you know, the, the, the tweet and so and so, so you might see tweet in my collections as well. But right. at the same time, I think that it's, uh, the, the Ethan K customer is more diverse than before and um, there is no one size that fits all. Yeah. Do you think it was important, uh, you know, I, I hear from a lot of Singaporean brands and, and Singaporean um, craftspeople uh, across the board that there's not enough, you know, respect in, in Singapore itself for, uh, for people, you know, doing work here uh, and that the customers here are still very focused on, oh, if it's from Europe, it must be better, or if it's from the UK, whatever, um, it must be better. But do, do you think that it, it helped or that you needed to go overseas and become a success and become so popular with customers from, from Russia and from the Middle East and from Europe and the United Kingdom and the United States so that the customer here in Singapore, in your home country, would say, Oh, okay. Well, if all of those guys like Ethan, then uh, then I'm okay to like Ethan as well. I I guess uh, that's a very valid question because you know creativity is very different in the East and the West. Uh, mm -hmm. I I can I can share with you quite a uh, uh, quite a, a honest account about this. Um, uh, I think that uh, first of all. Um, you know, uh, because, you know, Singapore is a relatively new country, I would say, you know, and, and uh, it is, it is, it is natural that uh, from before, uh, you know, the country, when the country was establishing itself, you know, it was very important to put food on the table, right? And so I would say that over the last 20 years, you know, it, it, Singapore had a magnificent uh, growth, you know, and, and uh, from, you know, establishing the country, you know, our forefathers did a fantastic job in that. And, and uh, I think that uh, what makes um, uh, it very exciting to be a creative person, be it in Singapore or be in the UK, uh, there's a there's definitely pros and cons for both. But I think that it is uh, definitely a great career to pursue today because of uh, the big changes in social and economic uh, 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 times. And, and this is uh, where great opportunities are formed. Of course, for the people that run big corporations, they are now, you know, uh, found themselves in, in a huge uh, number of problems and so on and so forth. The coronavirus pandemic, you know, has not been an easy one for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. but, but what I have to say is that um, uh, I see the difference because as a creative uh, uh, so-called talent or creative individual in Europe and the UK, um, the creative uh, visionary only does the, the creative. And, and most, of, most of the brand founders and the brand owners, they are not involved in the, the business at all. So they're usually in their studios and they're usually, you know, doing that. But, but coming from Asia, it's a very different ballgame. The creator is also an entrepreneur. Uh, and I, I see I see it very differently uh, in both uh, uh, countries. And so it's a plus and minus point, but I try to balance it in both sides. But then again, uh, if you're a great creator, you also have to appeal to the customer. So I think that um, uh, both are, are as important as each other, you know. And, and I think um, uh, in terms of the Asian economies, be it like China, Singapore, Hong Kong, and, and, and so and so forth, I think that, uh, you know, creativity is still a Fairly, uh, fairly new uh, topic. It will take some time before the industries and 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 the countries really do understand not just about creativity, but how to manage uh, 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 the creative industries. I think that is uh, a very uh, renewed topic for all of us, and it'll be quite interesting to see how this space evolves. But I do definitely see uh, uh, um, the potential for growth in this region for sure. Yeah. Right. Well, we're, we're kind of running out of time, and, and I did want to certainly discuss with you, um, you know, how how does how does someone tell a a beautiful uh, piece of piece of crocodile or alligator or, or whatever it may be um, yeah. from something every day? You know, I'm sure it's a similar situation to, you know, you can get a cashmere jumper from Uniqlo, or you can yeah. get 
Brunello Cuccinelli. And the difference between the two of those is, uh, is vast. So, you know, what, what makes the, um, you know, uh, what are the attributes or qualities of exquisite uh, piece of uh, piece of crocodile type of crocodile that you use in uh, in your accessories. So um, our our family uh, has been in the business for four generations. So of course there's expertise. You know the the tannery uh, uh, had partnered with LVMH a couple of years ago, and you know to strengthen the capabilities of the the, the exotic industry. But in terms of crocodile bags, there are also many different species and different grades. So you have the Colombian crocodile that that is much rougher in terms of appearance, and you know the price is like one fifth of what um the uh, um what the alligators and the, the Australian crocodiles are uh, are formed because as you can see this is the Nile crocodile from South Africa and it's very smooth on the surface and we we use three crocodiles per bag so we only use the belly for the front and the back panel so you can see that it takes a great uh, uh, deal of trouble for us to match the, the patterns and and that hence that's the reason why uh, the cost uh, uh, is, is high because we if we can't find the skin we don't produce the bag we don't use off to try to just make this design and 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 every uh, uh, Ethan K bag, you know, we use the belly. It's just like this this one as well. It, it, you know, it might look like a very small bag to you, but but there are three skins on it. One, two, oh, okay. and three, and you mm -hmm. can see the ring marks. You know, they all match each other. So. I guess, you know, like uh, in terms of crocodile skins, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of an art, you know, I'll be happy to do another masterclass next time with, uh, with you and to show you the different skins and the different qualities and how to export them. But when it comes to the belly of the crocodile, um, uh, uh, we try to use the ones with less scratches. Of course, there's no one perfect uh, crocodile, but uh, for us, we really uh, take our time to select. And sometimes, you know, crocodiles are very fierce feet creatures so it's part of a sustainable trade and you know yeah. in the past there was a misconception because um they thought that it was because of the leather trade that led to the 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 extinction of the species but then they did a study and it was because of the destruction of natural habitat and that mm -hmm. led to the decrease in the species so the farmers needed uh, the, the farming activities to, to, to ensure the survival and a small percentage is used for the skins. But having said that, ha uh, having the cost to maintain the farms are also extremely high because you can't just cull them. You know, it's part of the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species. So every one of our bags that goes through the customs and uh, through borders, you know, there's a special uh, CITES permit. So it's, uh, it's very different from the, the, the scrape skins or the bags that you see in the markets in, in, in different countries and so and so forth. So for us, uh, it, it continues to be uh, a, a kind of like a barrier for us because, you know, we have to be careful of our growth. But uh, our new Essentials collections will, will also, you know, take us to a broader audience because we don't have so long lead times. And there was once I designed a special bag for a client and it took two years years and it was, they were quite frustrated but of course when they saw the end result it was it was a masterpiece but having said that you know with these essential days that essentials are needed we don't have so much time for masterpieces not everyone has that so i guess um uh, it's quite exciting time for us but we uh, are here to cater for uh, the new luxury customer and we are extremely excited about their journey with us yeah. so so with a sense are you are you moving beyond purely exotic skins um or it's a, a, into you know calf and so forth Yes, so this is a perforated uh, uh, calf leather. So, so you can see the scales, uh, the, 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 the grain is beautiful and it has yeah. a beautiful contrast lining inside as well. Very well made. Um, and, and this bag um, is going to, this is called the mini briefcase and it's going to be the piece de resistance in my new e-commerce collection. Uh, one bag comes with like three straps. It, it, you, can do, you can look around the hand. Then it can also be a, a shoulder bag. And it also comes with a crossbody, a crossbody canvas strap. So you know this is part of the new collection that we are offering, and and it's quite exciting because uh, it's always fun to uh, enjoy good design. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's great to great to branch out, and uh, yeah. I think we're really glad to have you have you back in Singapore. Are you looking at, at staying um, home for a while, or uh, or will you be uh, heading back to to London, Saint Tropez, Vladivostok, <laughs> there? At, at well. so <laughs> 
I, I do miss my friends uh, a lot in uh, in London and in Europe as well. Um, of course, the European summer is is always one that uh, everyone loves. But I'm yeah. extremely comfortable here in Singapore at the moment, and and the tropical weather makes me feel like I'm on summer vacation every day. So uh, I'm quite excited, and and it's a great opportunity for me to reconnect with all my friends around the region, and uh, it's great because uh, you know the pace is uh, a little slower, so we can take time to enjoy the nature. The, the tropical um, scenery that will inspire me in my future collection. So uh, I think I'll, I might be back uh, uh, to Europe soon, but I'm not in a hurry as the, with the way I grow my company and with the way I de design my bags. That's great. Yeah. That's wonderful. No, I, you know, I've been reading um, bits and pieces in the, in, the, in the local media about uh, all of the excitement about you opening a, uh, an atelier and, uh, and boutique. Here, finally, after people having to schlep off to London in the past or, or have you around to them. So it's good news. It's good to have you back. Um, yes. well, if anyone has any questions, please uh, throw, them, uh, throw them towards us. I know someone was asking um, a little earlier uh, whether when you collaborate on a, on a design, whether it's more the customer or, you know, what percentage, I suppose, whether it's more the customer's um, needs and, and wants that, that dictate the final product or whether it's, whether it's more you. I would say it's probably more you, but integrating what they, what they want because it's always an Ethan K product, isn't it? Yes, uh, I, that's a very valid question because I, I always feel that, you know, I'm not just a craftsman, but I'm, I'm an artist as well. So, you know, I, I, if you know, for our new collection, we have a bag called the Divine Box. And I personally think that it's only good in black and in silver. So I had some clients that requested it in green and yellow, and I refused to make it because, you know, it's just not part of my DNA. Uh, I had I had previously male customers that came to me and do a, and and countless requests for a harbor sack, you know, a backpack. And I've only made one today. It was for a DJ uh, uh, for the Ultra Music Festival, and he loves backpacks. And but since then, and that was quite a fancy piece. But since then, you know, I had so many clients that told me, oh, you know, we have our briefcases and our backpacks from Tumi. And and frankly speaking, I, I I tried designing it, but nothing came out of it, you know. And so I will not make something that I I don't feel that. Um, is ergonomical in an exotic skin, but and I feel that it has to really come from uh, my heart and and what I feel is right for the brand. So um, you know, it might be a good news or it might be a bad news to some, but uh, we really assess uh, the special orders. Uh, uh, but we definitely not want to just blindly um, uh, uh, design anything that the client desires. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to show you some of my masterpieces uh, next week. Uh, in, in the gallery and, and I think we can explore more there. It's quite exciting uh, because over the last 10 years, we have created um, some really stunning pieces which I guess will be on exhibit sometime soon. Yeah. So I, I can't wait to come and, uh, come and pay you a visit. It's been really, really uh, terrific speaking with you today, Ethan, after a, a few years between, uh, between drinks and, and hopefully, yeah, next time we yes. will share a yeah, glass. Absolutely. Of Safely distant, you know, two meters yeah. apart. <laughs> it's so good to see you again, Christian. Uh, did you have any other questions? No, not for now. And, and uh, Instagram cuts you off after after one hour, so we've only sort of okay. got two minutes left. But um, but yeah, it's been really cool talking today. And let's let's have another conversation because I would love to do that um, that kind of masterclass on um, you know what. Uh, what what you know the qualities and uh, and attributes of uh, of a great piece of of croc or, or alligator. So uh, I think that'd be excellent um, to uh, to uh, teach the viewers and the audience. But uh, and and on that note, thank you to everyone who's who's joined us today. Much appreciated. Really glad to have uh, to have had you. And uh, Ethan, once again been a real pleasure and a, and a privilege to uh, to speak with you today my friend um looking forward to doing welcome home thank you christian i will i will catch up with you soon thank you very much take care see you take soon care. bye see you